never lost the magic numbers, and the magic number is 104.9. <laughs> oh. XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, two more shows. Two are off air for I don't know how long. Is that two more including this one? Yeah. No, 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 no. Two they, more after yeah, this one. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, no it's right, this, this, this is one and then there's another one. Right, two and more shows. And that's the last one. There's okay, two right. more shows, yeah. Including this Start, one. We're starting now. Starting two, now. If I just said this at the end, it might have been ambiguous. But I've said it at the beginning, there's two hours, that's a whole show. Right. So there's two more shows. Two more shows including this one. Yes, okay. well, obviously. So one more show after it's this one. It's only five past one. After this show, one more. Yeah, one more, yeah. Next week there's one more show, that means two altogether. Oh, no, now it's only one more show. Good night. Okay. Um, now, it better be a good one, Carl. Have we got, uh, Rockbusters? Yeah. To Check. win those prizes? Check. Have we got Monkey News? Check. Is it a real Monkey News or is it something that's slightly made Always up is. that you- What? Always is. Let's just check. Okay. Uh, Knob News? Uh, here we've got a bit of Knob News, yeah. I'm worried that Knob News, because it's only about penises, is a little bit mm -hmm. sexist. Um, have we got any fanny facts? <laughs> <laughs> can we maybe can we sort that out for next week? I don't want to alienate <laughs> our female audience. <laughs> Welcome to Minge London. <laughs> um, good. I'm glad that's that. Well, um, brilliant. Uh, have we got a song with a story. Yeah, doing that. What is it? Uh, I don't want to sort of tell you what it is yet because right. the song isn't that great. Do you oh, know what I mean? Good. It's not a song oh, that, like, that that's like an XFM song. But every time I hear it on, say, like Magic or whatever, yeah. I have an argument- 105.4. Yeah. I have an argument with Suzanne that, you know, what I think it's about, and mm. she says, don't be stupid, it's not about that, and I'll say, no, it is. And so we're gonna decide who's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what song you're talking about, and I don't know what the argument is, but Suzanne's right. Definitely. Well, no doubt about it. Yeah. We'll have a listen, but I'm hoping that once people sort of listen to it again with my thoughts every well, time- Well, this song it, sums up what people should think of you. It's don't believe a word. All right, that's the sort of links I'm capable of. If that doesn't bag us a Sony, then that's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Thin Lizzy, don't believe a word on XFM 104.9. I'm gonna miss this show. It's been good. You might be the only one. No, well, you know, so we're, we're, we'll come back again. We've got we've got a lot to do over the next few months, but maybe 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 for Christmas or just after. But I still call Carl every day anyway. Oh, sure. Uh, um, today I called him, um, a couple of days ago. Of course you did. And I went, uh, that was the weekend, I went, what are you doing? He went, oh, just in Regent's Park and that. I went, what are you doing? He said, just going for, went, oh, Jesus. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. I went, what? He went, a caterpillar just fell out of the sky. God, it's there, it's wriggling around. I went, sure a bird didn't just drop it. He looked like, went, oh yeah. <laughs> Of course it did. Yeah. For a moment he thought caterpillars were raining from the sky. I thought I was- t I was- I was in chicken licking. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. What- why did you think a caterpillar had fallen out of the sky? I don't know, it just startled me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carl being startled! I like the idea of him straight on the phone to Trevor McDonald. Look, Trevor, there's- there's caterpillars, insects falling out of the sky. They're falling out of the sky now. Put it on the news, quick. Are you sure there wasn't a bird? Oh, there was a bird. Yeah, sorry, Trev. Bye! <laughs> but it was weird. after, like, I hung up. Well, I hung up the phone and that from you. I mm. sort of, uh, sat there for a bit watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine him cross-legged, just in front of it. But, do you know what? Grass. Because- because of his shape, the shape of his head and his sort of IQ, I bet the caterpillar was thinking, Mama. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Go and, on. Uh, it was- it was sort of running about all over the place, right, Steve? So the caterpillars have loads of feet and that, don't they? <laughs> Well, they have six legs. They're actually a larva of an insect. They have six legs, but they have little sucker things to hold on to the back of cabbages and that. No, they've got more than that. They've it's got. Well, I tell you, they have got six true legs. Trust me. Trust me. I'm a scientist. And you were thinking what, Carl? Well, it was. But they've got little. It. They've got little pods. They've got little um, pseudo pod legs mm. and little suckers. Yeah. But it was running about like everywhere, right? Mental, but sort of <laughs> running off to the left. And then it sort of went back to where it was. <laughs> then that, you know, went r right and what have you. And I'm just thinking, whoever gave them the legs, right? What's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you can get about- Imagine that sentence. Did you hear that, just, did you hear that sentence? Can we play that <laughs> sentence back? No, I don't think we can. Imagine who gave them that legs. Whoever, whoever, whoever gave him them legs, what's the point if they don't know where they're going and that? And that. Always and that. And that, but- but maybe you just, to be fair to the caterpillar, with all its legs, okay, and you'd know where it was going, it had just been 
plucked from its house by a bird, shot up into the sky and then dropped from eighty feet, hitting the ground. Onto the head of a weird bold shaved monkey. <laughs> 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 it was probably concussed. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's one of them things again though. But I it mean... still knew more about the world than you. How does that make you feel? I just, I just think it's a waste of time having all them feet. It's the same thing as the, uh, <laughs> Now it's got feet, feet yeah. now! It has a nightmare the, uh, behind shoes, doesn't it, Carl? <laughs> all the, uh, what was it, what was it you were saying about leeches and that? Cause we were talking about insects. Well, they're not insects. These, they're they're not, not insects. What are they? Well, I think they're probably, uh, class, they're probably platy helminths. Probably a, yeah. sort of like a flatworm type thing. That's they what you were thinking, wasn't it, Carl? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know what the phylum is, but there's, no. They'd, uh, they'd be, you know. What was uh, the leech, what was an interesting well, leech? Well, there's an experiment, uh, um, where you get a maze for a leech, and there's a bit of blood thing, and it learns, it eventually finds its way to the blood, okay, and then it knows. Okay. And if you, if you put it back to where it starts, it knows where it straight, it goes straight towards it, because it's learnt it. If you liquidise that leech, right. and feed it to some leeches who have never done the maze, because of a thing called chemical memory, they find their way straight to the blood. That is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's incredible. We but should try that at Hampton Court one weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but maybe with some tourists. <laughs> we'll just blend up some tourists. <laughs> or the people on them, I'll tell you, we would do it. Those people who go on, um, Celebrity Love Island. Any of them. They would do it anything it. to get yeah. They will be liquidised. People <laughs> have enemas. They will do and they wank off pigs. They will do anything to get on yeah. telly. What about that? Be liquidised and fed to a n get get one D celebrity slapper, uh, liquidise her and feed her to another slut. So and see if she can tippers. find her way. <laughs> and see if she can find her way to Channel Five. Yeah. What <laughs> a brilliant show, hosted by Jimmy Carr. Of course. That'd be amazing. Kinks, better things on XFM 104.9. Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. But do you know this, um, we were talking about the leech thing. Sure. Right. You're saying put them in a blender. I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, someone did. Yeah. Why were they doing that in the first place? Do you know what I mean? How did they find out that if you if you put leeches in a blender, I don't know. They probably kept notes. I don't. I don't. I no, don't no, know. no, no. But what what made them? Were they just having a laugh? What what made them go? Uh, uh, was it a party? It was a party. It was a couple of research scientists. They'd been given a million pounds, and the boss was coming around to say what you're doing. And they were just making a smoothie, and they went quick. So Mr. Yakamoto's come round, throwing some leeches. What are you doing? Just leeching. Just feeding these leeches to some other leeches. <laughs> All right. Well, that looks like science. I'm off. <laughs> Well, that's what they do. Here's another million pounds yeah, for next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Bye! Yeah. That's how they work though, isn't it? A lot yeah. of these scientists- Yeah, that's exactly how they work. I'm that's just it. saying they're getting away with murder. Go on. Well, just- just the way they do sort of spend uh, a And he can't say anything in front of him, cause everything's got- everything's- everything's got a point with him. Mm. You can't have a conversation with Carl, cause he always- he always puts in a curveball. You- you tell him something. And it, 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 the question comes back that you never could have expected. When I told him about that story about the monkey who had run away because he had an argument with his father, he said, what was it about? <laughs> yeah. No, no one in the world thinks that. <laughs> no one in the world the, the, would ask that question. The leech thing. Yeah. You know how you said, uh, show, show the leech the way to its better food, whatever it's eating or whatever. Yeah. In the maze, right? Yeah. It makes its way. Yeah. Right? It eats the cheese or whatever. Right? Blood. Blood, right? And then, <laughs> and you give it, you give Everything's it. Everything's a cartoon yeah. with Carl as well, isn't it? Everything is a cartoon. It's a leech with a little hat <laughs> and a little baby bell at one end. But what happens if you got another one and yeah. move the, uh, bit of blood, Yeah. Right? So, feed those two leeches to one, then what's- is it gonna get confused or- Do you know what I mean? Which- which way will it go if you've- if it's eaten two, two leeches- Yeah. That have done two different ways. Yeah. Is it sort of stressed out? <laughs> No! I don't know. It probably knows both routes. It probably goes, well, there's one over here. Oh, there's one over here as well. I'm happy. I've had two for the price of one. Right, and, okay. I'm, and I'm full of leeches. <laughs> then what, what's the best that can happen for like- I don't- what are you talking about? What do you want because out of I'm me? Because I'm just saying if they could- if they- if by that, if by doing that they can go, right, we can do this, we're humans. I'd go- Oh! What do you mean? What do you- what do you mean in the name of Christ? Do what do humans. you mean? All I'm saying is, what's the point in doing it? Think what- what do you mean? 
If you could do it with humans, I'd say- But well, what, 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 right, Carl, think about what you're saying, man. Yeah, I'm saying- If you could do it with humans, do what with humans? Say if Einstein, right, didn't do all that maths that he did, right, say if he got to E equals and then he died, squash right. his brain, eat, give it to someone else, say, right, eat that, and they go, right, it's E equals N2 squared, isn't it? What I'm saying is- But they wouldn't, they'd go, E equals, oh. Wouldn't they? If it was chemical memory, they'd go, oh, E equals, oh, yeah, same as Einstein said. Yeah, I just ate his brain. What am I saying? What are you, <laughs> what have you made? Carl, think what you're saying. It's unbelievable. Uh, it, it, the, the thing is, right, you, actually, you, you are what a scientist does. You just keep saying why and what and why and what, but nothing's ever enough for you, which is good. It's, no, it's nice I, to have I, a insatiable. I get annoyed with all the the amount of time and effort that's put into stuff that's useless. What's the next stage to squashing that leech? <laughs> if, if it's not going anywhere, forget it. Work on something else. <laughs> it's the same way in some science magazine I was reading about. <laughs> is there anything smaller than a quantum electron or something? Yeah. It's like if it's not getting in the way, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why are they worrying about things we can't see? Uh, if, you just fed, if, you, if you blended up Carl's brain and fed it to someone, would it make any difference? No, no, they no, wouldn't no. even notice, would they? Wouldn't it would you fed it to a leech and the leech would go, oh, I don't know what I, I was don't. doing, I was, I don't know what, where was I going? I'm even I was, more confused. I don't know. Talking of leeches, did you see the dregs that they put into Big Brother last I've night? I've not been watching it. It's, I mean, it's bad enough anyway, it's a house full of people you wouldn't cross the road. Yeah. To, to, uh, to save, yeah, right? Yeah, But there's three, they've put in three more to spice up a little bit. They, they've put in a low esteem model. Sure. Right? They've put in Mr. Bean, who is the whitest man I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a new race. Yeah. He's an easy through. And this thing that looks like Matt Lucas in a bikini. Wow. Unbelievable. The f the fat things on her back, I thought she was coming towards me. Really? It was unbelievable. And the first thing she said, she went in, she looked in the mirror, adjusted herself and went, Oh, me minge! <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, it's, that, that's the level, uh, it's un- Do these people have relatives? Do they have- is there anyone in the world who knows them, claims yeah. to be a friend of theirs? Family. Families. Do they have they, family there or the well, family yeah. just- no, Have they just moved away? No, no. They're probably- their family- they're, like, their family are probably quite proud of them because they're on the telly. Ugh. It's probably like, uh, saw your daughter last night saying uh, all we binge on the telly. <laughs> yes, she was on the telly, wasn't she? <laughs> yes, she was on the telly. <laughs> the, the, what about the bit about all we minge? She got one out immediately, went- of course. Got it out, lo lobbed it out. Uh, uh, it's- it, I mean, it's unbelievable. It looks like an experiment. I can't watch it anymore. It's just too much now. These because I I can't relate to those people in the like in the first series. I always remember it was like it seemed like a genuine social experiment. Yeah, exactly. There was intrigue. There was drama. Yeah. It was It was genuinely great hypnotic television. Now it's like putting ants in a jar and shaking. I it. don't. Yeah. I don't know what's. But even now, I I couldn't watch that once a night every week. No, I know. It's just. It's, it is yeah, unbelievable that, that what they're, what people are willing to do now and the time, because they've just put in people, uh, I mean it's, it, I mean it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. You don't, you don't care about anyone. But I suppose what, what, what's good is that you want, you, I think you watch it now because you want one of them to fall over and hurt themselves. Yeah, or just choke on a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> and no one else in the house knows the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, feed him more chicken. <laughs> Send him more roast chicken. So we've got a wonderful celebration for you. <laughs> Pushing the senses by feeder on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. How you doing, Carl? Oh, all right, yeah. Another holiday? Well, it well, wasn't well. holiday. It wasn't holiday. Well, it was. You had, you had five days off work. Why well, isn't it holiday? You had five days not working for a living. You know how many days holiday gets a year now? Twenty-nine. Oh, that's it, more than teachers, isn't it? It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Well, I know the kind of hours you work, Rick. <laughs> it's mad. I mean, if you're not in work by midday, you're furious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm always- Twenty-nine's normal. For the normal working person. Yeah, but, you know. And anyway, it wasn't a proper holiday. I went to see my mum and dad. It's nice to see them and everything, but it's not holiday, is it? Why? It's not going away. It's not getting on a plane, is it? Going away. Oh, is that definitely a holiday? What happened before 1950? Mm, I don't know. Who used to go- then? Yeah, exactly. Who used to go to Blackpool, Brighton? That was holiday. 
Yeah, but I didn't Where did go you to. go? Went to Wales. There you go. Lovely holiday. Lovely holiday. Have a holiday in Wales. That's what they say, innit? Have a, have a, come to the Wales and have a holiday. That's what <laughs> they say, innit? So, so, cause come to Wales and meet your parents. Come to Wales and have a lovely holiday. Mm. Well, anyway, it was, uh, it was good and that. It's always good to see them. Yeah. But, um... Week off work. Do you know, do you know, like, my mum likes gnomes and stuff? Yeah. Right, uh, Cause she, she does. Said, oh, uh, She's lived with one for three years. <laughs> she said, uh, you know, get your dad to take us to this, uh, to this park where they've got, uh, like, you know, six foot gnomes and stuff, right? <laughs> Have a walk about. That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Sounds like a living nightmare. Keep an eye on Carl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway. He stood still for two minutes, someone bought him. <laughs> no, 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 you can't buy him on that. It's like, uh, it's like a little exhibition thing. Yeah. Right? And it's part of a hall. Right, this big hole that you have to pay to get in, but we didn't want to see the hole, I just wanted to see the gnomes. Of course right? you did, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, my dad says, yeah, well, we can, uh, we can get in there for free. Of course he did, clever. Right? So, we parked up on this little country lane, right? <laughs> no one about. We How much does it go in? Like two quid? About three quid each. Yeah. But he said, well, yeah, but if you don't have to pay, do you know what I mean? You enjoy it even more, don't you, when you're walking about and you think, I've got this three quid in my pocket, no one's having it. Yeah. Right? Uh, no, looking over shoulder for a bloke with a peak hat saying, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it more, no. Go on. Yeah, but you don't worry about it, do you? have got a bit of money now then, Rick. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, you've changed. So anyway, yeah. so we had to walk across about four fields. <laughs> <laughs> for three quid! Right. And, uh, what happened was, uh, uh, we're walking through <laughs> all these fields and what have you, big grass and muddy bits and all that because it'd been <laughs> raining and uh, climbing over fences and stuff. And we're in this field, right, and I look to me right and there's about 30 cows all staring at us, right? And uh, Suzanne started to panic a bit. She said, this isn't, we shouldn't be here. And Dad says, of course we can, we're allowed to go wherever we want, you know, all this land, it's, you know, it's rambler's rights and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, take a uh, cow, if, cow if you want, so, unattended. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, so it's been right for leaving him in the field unattended, I'm having one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so keep us for a week. Across, yeah. Anyway, these cows start surrounding us. <laughs> surrounding us? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, brilliant! Oh, no. Face <laughs> off! And Suzanne's panicking, going, this isn't right, he's gonna, we're, we're not gonna make it to the fence in time. They, 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 they're moving faster than us and they started sort of running a bit. Wow. And, uh, it's like some kind of like, bovine West Side story. Don't <laughs> a gang of cows <laughs> coming at you. Don't worry about it and stuff. But uh, my dad had to sort of stand there and like wave a stick at him. Of course. And and, uh, and we got away. But Suzanne was like having a bit of a sweat <laughs> and you on. Got away. And saying uh, you know we could have got killed. Sure. And my dad saying no, nah, it never happens. And <laughs> I just wondered if if it does if if there's a risk of. Yeah, it's, it is rare. But um, there's been a couple of cases of. Being trampled by cows, they're not aggressive. They sort of run through you. Well, they they're aggressive if they've got a calf. They've uh, had a, a, ca a, a what? They had kids with them. Kids, yeah. That's a, that's a goat you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were trying to sneak into the gnome <laughs> thing, and they were worried that like if too many people did it, <laughs> like, they thought some cows. We can just sneak in. They were cows, trying, yeah. No one's expecting cows. And the cows were going walk upright like a human. <laughs> Don't walk up hard. <laughs> they thought you'd blow their cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have been killed by cows before. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that was like the highlight and then, uh... So when you arrived there, you were presumably covered in mud, looking like something that had just come from Glastonbury, staggering around this, this uh, it exhibition. Wasn't that, it wasn't that bad, it was just like a, a woods and it had like a, a funny sort of funeral pla- uh, like a graveyard thing. Right. Yeah. With bodies sort of hanging out the ground and that and, uh... Really? these six foot gnomes. Right. Uh, and then we, we just set off again, walked back. But we sure this wasn't a field. dream? No, it was good, it was good. But then, then I got back, right, Steve, and, uh, called up Ricky, I said, right, uh, you know, are you about? Have a chat and that. So he said, oh, I'll just come round, it's a, it's a nice day. Have a drink and what have you. So I got round there at about half past six, right? Uh, go up to his door, knock on his door, right? He stood there with his tackle out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what did you make of that? What was wrong with that? What do you mean, what's wrong with Why that? Were I mean, was that? Why were you looking at it? Why were you looking at it? I tried not to look at it. <laughs> but again, you're always sort of attracted to it, aren't you? Kind of like... <laughs> I've <laughs> never been attracted to another man's tackle. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you can't help but have a, have a little sly look. <laughs> Especially when it's there. When you, when you ring the bell, and I mean the, the one on the door, right? <laughs> and that's, that's hanging out. And does he dress to the left or the right? 
<laughs> it was to the left, wasn't it? Yeah, it was left, yeah. Just popped- just popped out of my shorts. <laughs> for him. Just popped him out of the shorts. Should've seen the state of him. <laughs> shorts on, no top. A uh, cigar. <laughs> Look like someone out of the Sopranos. <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we, then we sat on the balcony drinking wine, didn't we? Did you pop it back in, or was it? Yeah, I, put, I popped it straight back in. I've got the laugh. Sure. I've got the laugh yeah. I wanted. Yeah. He walked in. He went. Mm, it's not that hot. Straight away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hot. Oh, brilliant! Then, uh, was that knob news, or was yeah. there more? No, it's got more knob news. That's just a taster. Just a taster. Listen, right. let's play some average. Let's play some great music, and maybe we should have some early knob news. Early knob news coming up. <laughs> Once this big dog chased me. Landed by Ben Folds on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've had a couple of emails, Rick, um, saying that there have been reports of people actually being killed by cows. Yeah. So it is actually quite a lucky escape for Carl and his, uh, family. The worrying thing about that is it's tragic and anyone dying uh, unexpectedly, uh, it, it, it's terrible. But the, the, what makes it worse is when it's something like being killed by cows, because mm. there's a slight, I mean, a slight humour aspect. Yeah. Being, uh, are you killed? Killed by a cow. Yeah. Um, you know, like for example, if you were killed by a falling safe. Yeah. The, f the vicar might laugh. Yes. That's my worry. Yeah. Well, I read a story in the paper of a man who, um, fell out of a window and died. He fell out of like, he was like a third story of window and he fell out. But it was slightly amusing because at the time he was mooning. I know. For a laugh. He was mooning someone and he fell out. I know. So when he, when he fell, like, even though it was tragic, he obviously had his trousers around his ankles and his arse out. I know. The thing that there was a kid who died, got hit by a truck mooning. But the, yeah. you know, the worst thing like that is, it's not funny enough to be killed for. No, Meaning no. isn't funny enough. No, it's just not a good enough gag. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a, it's a witless sort of thing to do and yeah. then to be killed for it. If you'd just, just done a two hour impromptu Eddie Izzard style, you know, yeah. routine and then you got tra I know. tragically killed, that would sort of make sense. But, but doing yeah. something that's a Mooning, little bit... it's almost karmic because it's such a bad joke. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like some weird universal karmic way. It's like if you hadn't been mooning, you maybe wouldn't you wouldn't have got killed. I know. If you haven't done such a lame joke, Maybe you'd be okay. Yeah, but that's it. D d d d but know. there's lots. Yeah, you don't want to be walking along. You know, you want to be walking through the garden and, hit, and stand on a rake, and it flips up. And it hits you so kind of, hard, and it's like a boing noise, is it? Yeah, hits and you. it hits you so hard that it kills that it you. Kills you. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, or you fall out of a window, and a, and a cactus goes up your bum. You I don't know. Want you that. killed by it's cactus up the arm. I know. <laughs> or <laughs> you're at a concert, and a fat woman stays dives. Yeah. And she just Lands squashes you. you. Yeah. Squ How did he die? He was squashed by a big hefty. Mama Cass just jumped on him. Just big <laughs> fat woman squashed him to death. Yeah. So you are. Tell what? you what though, what? right? Uh, talking about fat women. Go on. Um, well, I'm not having a go. But <laughs> did you see Michelle McManus on? Uh, oh, man yeah. yeah. You are what you eat. What yeah. is she eating? <laughs> Girls allowed. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> It was unbelievable. <laughs> no, but to be fair, you know she did. Did you see her in her bikini? Whatever. Yeah. Well, yes, but she was always a little bit. Yeah, but just a little bit. Well, no, she eats too much, right? But what I did like about it was that she had a go, you know, she did lose her- hard and that, yeah. Huh? I quite liked her at the end of it, really. Yeah, she she's not an unpleasant it. woman, she's a lovely woman, but yeah. I mean, mm. like I said before, there was that interview in the Heat magazine where she, you know, I tend to eat eleven packets of Doritos a night. Yeah. Eleven pa- I mean- Yeah. Come on, Michelle. Yeah. That's too much, isn't it? Unless you're trying to win some kind of competition, <laughs> like trying to find some kind of, you know, a golden ticket in one of the packets. There's no yeah. excuse. What could you, what could you possibly be trying to win to but, eat those oh. every day? But she, it's not, it, it wasn't her who annoys me, it's that doctor in it, that woman, she does me head in. Yeah. I can't be doing with her the way, uh, well, she, you know she's not actually officially a doctor, is no, she? No, and her bedside manner's not very good either. No, It's I like the, the fear tactic that uh, I think you want a little bit and, of- And what does she look like? I mean, she doesn't look like the sort of peak of health. She's no, got I that know. weird sort of witch-like crone well, face. Well, you can't be good for you hanging about all that poo all the time. She's always delving into that every day. <laughs> I used yeah. to be told, you know, n don't mess about with dog poo because it can make you go blind. Yeah. It's constantly at it. Yeah, I know, yeah. You're pinching through it. And it annoys me the way it's like, you know, well, let's have a look at your poo, let's see if you're eating the wrong types of food. The person's about 33 stone. Yeah. It's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't need to look at that. It just wind- and, and I'll tell you the thing that, I mean, I'd never have it done anyway, right? But the, uh, the colonic thing. Did Michelle have that? I didn't see yeah, it. She yeah, had that she had and they show on it. She sat there, sort of lying down. She's like, oh. But I don't understand why people have that done anyway, unless you unless you are sort of bunged up. Yeah, or you've got a cactus up there. Or, <laughs> yeah. But the other thing is like the way um, 
Like it's a, a clear tube. Why, why do you need to, you know what I mean? Why do you need to see what's whizzing past? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's some sort of generation game. You've got to, yeah. you've got to remember you what's going past. just everything, then you win a prize. Yeah. Why can't you just look at it in the bucket after and go, right, yeah. Well, why do you need it at all? Why do you need to look at it? Well, it's- well, That'd be interesting, isn't it? See what's- see what's come out, I don't know. So, so yeah, that's where that went. No, oh, that's what I've been looking for that. Remote control. Uh, how does it work? I don't want to go into graphic detail, but they- they just send water up there, don't no, they? No, caffeine. Or? Caffeine? Yeah, so it's like a big- it's like a gallon of coffee. Wow. That goes up there, and it wants to come out immediately, obviously. And then it- it percolates. <laughs> but when did that happen? How did someone sort of go, tell you what you want to do? I think it was on- first invented on distraction. To win a car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do I? I suppose they just want, they thought there's stuff up there that's not coming out. It's for, you know, they find things up there. Though, isn't it? They, they, they did that thing that they find things up there that they swallowed when they were five and that, don't they? Lego yeah. bricks and stuff. Exactly, yeah, marbles. But I mean, meats and things is, can stay in there for, you know, it gets, it gets caught in a little, you know, a little recess in your, in your 30 foot of tubing. And, um, it, uh, it doesn't come out. Talking of meats, I saw an advert on the way in today. Question to both of you: Who eats pepperoni? I don't know. Have you ever eaten a pepperoni? It's uh, uh, disgusting. I do. I've never seen anyone eating a pepperoni, buying one. I've uh, never heard anyone say delicious pepperoni earlier. I just, I, I don't associate it. But I know, but with I've, anyone, I've but never seen anyone. When you one. think, what is it? Just sort of like. Um, uh, curdled, uh, salt, salty. It's sort of like, um, oh, do you want to try a big long blood bogey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I won't, no. It lasts forever. Oh, that's scary then. Yeah. You just keep, keep it. Well, it's like keep, it, keep, it, keep, it, keep it under your couch. It, it, it'd be just as nice in a year's time. <laughs> it does look like something you'd find down the back of the oven when you were cleaning out. One of those Gordon Ramsay documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, because oh. it's so, I always associate it's pepperamis and it's the, uh, those nutrition. Drinks, which are like a, it's like a, it looks like a, a dog food tin. I think it's just called something like nu nutrition or nutri drink or something. Oh yeah. And you always see some empty ones on a brick wall near a council estate. Oh right. Uh, which I th and I think the only people who eat them are homeless people. Um, oh I really? Like, I, 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 like I, I, I thought you were saying it's bodybuilders. No, no, no. It's because you buy these. You can see them in um, in in regular news agents. It's not a bodybuilder. I don't believe. Thing. I don't believe a homeless who's just got a quid because she runs in and, and buys. Uh, an isotonic and you drink. No, it's not isotonic. No, it's it's. A, I think it's basically it, if you don't want to eat a meal because you're too high on smack, it'll give you as much as you can possibly need oh. just to keep you alive until your next. Hit. And tell me, Steve, does the special brew do that, or am I barking up the wrong tree with <laughs> I that? I don't know. I don't know. Because they seem to be getting a lot of nutrition from special me, the, brew. The people who make special brew now, they just they just resign to the fact that it's only homeless people who are drinking it. It's like well. <laughs> We may as well just market it chiefly at them. What's, what's the advertising? Takes the edge off when you can't <laughs> yeah, find smack. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, <laughs> you, are you trying to sleep on Tottenham Court Road? <laughs> 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 oh, God! <laughs> New Order, World, XFM 104.9 with Gervais, Steve Richard, Carl Pilkington, uh, and it's knob news time. We're all very excited. Now, last week's knob news was what, Carl? Do you remember it was a man who grew a knob on his arm? Sure. No, he didn't grow it there, did he? He put it there. Well, I know that, but, yeah. Just popped it on his arm. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Um. Let's recap, let's just recap of the week's news. <laughs> yeah. Right now is the headlines. Well, we've like talked, we've talked about it before. Do you know the, uh, the little mouse that had an ear on its back? Yeah, sure. Right. Well, um, he thought he had a bad time, right? Listen to this one. Mouse walking about, with a, uh, sort of wearing a, uh, a monkey's testicle. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a laugh. <coughs> this is what I mean about a lot of scientists. <laughs> what are they doing? When's that gonna come in handy? <laughs> I don't know what you mean! Well, they were seeing if, um, you know, say if a fella loses one, right? Hitler, Hitler or whatever. <laughs> and they go, well don't worry about it, we can sort you out. Uh, I don't know what the monkey's gonna do, not unless they keep passing them on or whatever, but the, the actual monkey testicle yeah. was put on the mouse, um, and it worked. It worked for the mouse. But, but isn't it, I mean isn't a, a monkey's testicle quite large in, in relation to a mouse? Would it not look like the mouse was on a space hopper or something? Oh yeah, it didn't look good. Well right. they, didn't put, they didn't put it where its testicles would be. No they did. Like, put it, well, how could it walk then? 
the ear was on his back so he could just get about. Well, I don't know. But well, you don't good. know, do you? You just guessed. Did no. they grow the- did they grow the monkey's testicles where the mouse well, testicles would- Well, it looks stupid anywhere else, though, wouldn't it? Oh, whereas a mouse with monkey testicles, that's fine. Oh, I'd, you'd be showing off. You'd be alright. I'd prefer that than the ear. When that mouse gets put <laughs> back in with the other mice, do the other mice go, George, you look different. Have you had anything done? <laughs> but, but, the, but the weird thing is, as well, apparently it still works as a monkey. What? So, like, what are you the, talking about? Like the, you know, the, uh, the sperm and that was, uh, it was still sort of monkey. monkey of course sperm. it was. What do you, t what are you talking about? Well, that's weird. But, but, what are you, Carl, what, but what do you, it, it's only a, it's only a, a thing to give it nutrients. That's all the thing they're testing. It's like grafting at that level. It, it, right, what's your question? Cause I'm, I'm, right. What do you think? It would change eventually, it would have changed into a mouse testicle. Cause it had been hanging around a mouse for so long. No, I thought the actual sperm of it, though, would be a mouse's. Why? Because it's hang- it's, it's hanging off a mouse. No, but the- but it's- but your sperm is actually created in the testicles. So- so- That's why they, that's why it has to be outside your body, otherwise we put them in a nice little cage. But I'm, ge I'm guessing then that they've done this operation so that they can do it to humans. Yeah? Why would I want a monkey testicle if my kids are gonna be monkeys? What use is it? No, think! That's- that's- no, no. The, the, That's what happen anyway, Carl. <laughs> yeah, but think. Think of what you're saying. They've grown a monkey testicle on a mouse to see if it would still function as a monkey's testicle, okay? So they can do that to humans. So think, Carl. What they'd do is, they'd grow a human testicle on a mouse and it could still be used as a human testicle. So what? To give you a testicle that you've lost. From a, from a mouse? No, from another person who, who it was kept alive on a mouse because it's kept the nutrients alive as opposed to keeping it a deep freeze. Maybe bollocks go off after a week. I don't know. Maybe they get accidents. Can you, he had a little a, a card. Do you donate your testicles yet? Yeah, I'll tell you what. No one needs testicles yet. Let's keep them on a mouse. You you have yours ripped off in a, in some sort of bizarre skiing accident. You go, well, uh, you go into, you go in a Battersea dog town, <laughs> you pick the ones you want, they can grow them on anything. They can grow them on a Dachshund. Bulldogs are growing them usually, are usually, that's where you see a bulldog, usually that's waiting for an operator. What don't you understand, Carl? Hang on a minute, is what, I thought this was knob news, not well, testicle time, I don't well, understand yeah, what Yeah, this right. testicle time's not for another ten minutes. <laughs> yeah! No, it's yeah. all, it's all sort of it linked and that though, isn't it? Well, um, Sometimes, sometimes it's linked to a mouse. But do you, I mean, what, what do you think about, like, I don't know. Testing stuff out like that. Is it worth? Is it worth it? Could, could you not just go straight from? But listen, Carl, I'm getting this information from you. No, it's, it's, if it's this was right. on Question Time and someone said there were, you know, Dimbleby and Paxman or whatever said it, I'd think about it as a moral dilemma. You've just said you saw a mouse with a monkey testicle. What do you think of that? I don't think <laughs> any of it. I don't think anything of it is the answer, Carl, because I can't trust the info. I cannot trust anything that comes out of your mouth. Well, it's, it's true, but it's just all this, it's the same thing, innit? It's the leeches in a blender, it's the fella looking at an electron. Yeah. It's, it's the mouse with an ear on its back. Yeah. I don't know what the point is. But you don't read on. Cause I've <laughs> seen you read some, and you're going, look at that, man survives on eating knee. And, and I go, what else? You go, yeah, I didn't read on, I didn't but read on. You look at the mouse with the ear on the back, and you just think, that must be murder at a concert. You don't think? <laughs> you don't yeah. think? No, yeah. I, just, I just you think, don't read is, it, is it worth sort of wasting you all think, the- You think he swallowed someone's ear, he gnawed it away and <laughs> swallowed it and it's just in his system? <laughs> yeah. No, I just get a bit sad about the- the mice and I that. agree, I mean that- that is sad, yeah. I mean of course, anything like that is- is awful. Well saying that, I remember ages ago, the- the other load of people on, uh, on Oxford Street, don't know if you've seen them where they, they get you to sign stuff. Yeah. And the the woman got annoyed with me, right? Because she was saying about, uh, you know, drugs with animals, testing them out and stuff yeah. like that, which is bad. Yeah. But and I was saying, yeah, it's really bad. And I was looking at the pictures and that. But I said, what would happen, you know, if if, if like the drugs, aspirin, and the monkey's got headache, <laughs> is it such a bad thing? <laughs> she got annoyed. Didn't want to listen anymore. <laughs> It's a good point though, isn't it? <laughs> At what point is it cruel to test stuff out and things? Yeah. Give it some neurofen. <laughs> it's happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet that ear, I bet that mouse had, um, headache. 
Because everything must have been loud. The other, just the other mice squeaking must have done its head in. Yeah. Oh, that would give Turn him a neurofen. Turn that radio down. Give him a neurofen, please. But listen, are we gonna get, uh, rock busters out of the way quickly? Go on then, Let's quickly. Do it then. Give well us a clue. It's not gonna take long, is it? Go on. Right then. Yeah. So, uh, three clues and that. Yeah. Uh, and that. uh, uh, initials of a band and artist. Yeah. You can win some stuff. Steve yeah. can go through the- t- Ladder 49 better be in there. Oh, let me just quickly, uh, right it's ladder 49. You get on with those clues and I'll tell you what's happening. And this is the last time, the winner of this- No, we'll do it again next week. Oh, is it? And then there'll be six people and we just draw someone out of a hat to win the, the signed Homer, the, uh, Nigel Tufnell, and the Us as Flannels. Right, you're ready, But they've got great prizes. They've got Alias, they've got- They have. They've got Alias, they've got The Aviator, uh, a Batman cartoon series, M. Night Shalimans, The Village, uh, atrocious film, and Ladder 49, there it is. Brilliant. It's in there. Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta. Their greatest challenge lies in rescuing one of their own. Brilliant. Go on then, Carl. Right, the first one then. Uh, when I'm ill, I throw up horse food. When I'm ill, I throw up horse food. How can that work? What's going on there? The initials there, I, H, right? It's a band or an artist or a singer, something like that. I, H, they're they're the initials, the clue. I've got it. When I'm ill, I throw up horse food, right? I've got it. Right then, don't say anything. Works, doesn't it? No. Mm. (laughs) Second one, uh, that garden tool, it's not yours, what are you doing with it? Right? Yeah. That garden tool you're messing about with, eh? it's not yours. Yeah. Give it back. Right? What was that? N-D. N-D. Right? Artist or a band. What's going on there? Right? <laughs> Third one, <laughs> that male sheep sounds fed up. Why is he fed up? Right? T-R. <laughs> T-R is the initials. That male sheep sounds fed up. What's going on? If you know the answers to them three, uh, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk or you can text in 83xfm. Right? Great prizes. You can win yourself a copy of Ladder 49. <laughs> <laughs> I got another confession to make. I'm your Foo Fighters. Best of you on XFM 104.9. All right, Carl, you calm down now about science. Oh, I'm just, it, it just does me head in a lot of this stuff. I yeah. think I would have been better off sort of growing up in the 1940s or something. Why? Uh, well, there isn't as much science going on. People just lived, <laughs> didn't they, for the moment. So you, what, you, well, what if you'd had to go to war? What? what All if right, you, maybe you'd... 1945 then I'd be happier. Just after the war. <laughs> just that bit after the war and before they started messing age? about. What age? What year would you want to be born? When was the war over? 45. Right. 46 then. But there's people born be rationing. 46. There's rationing for another 10 years. 56 then. But there's a lot of science going on. Oh, in forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, it, it just annoys me all the messing about. They're always messing about with stuff and I sometimes think, is it doing any good? Is what I mean. Um, Mouse with ears, mouse with monkey's testicles. They're messing about with a mammoth now. Go on. Well, they're just saying, well, they're, they're managing to knock one together. Who <laughs> <laughs> And you just think, some, some scientist somewhere. Well, it's just it's Andy, about. Andy. No, but it's just, uh, do we need, do you know, I mean, we've done it before about the do we need them thing. The amount of creatures and insects and that, that are knocking about. <laughs> You've got that caterpillar that I mentioned walking about, it doesn't know where it's going. Get rid of them. The mammoth. The world's busy enough, it's crowded, it's overcrowded now. How, how much room are they gonna take up? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why are they doing it, Carl? Do you know? You've got, you just, all you know is that they're, they're trying because, to muck around with Because they can, because that's all it is, isn't it? Because they can. They're messing about, someone's yeah. being paid to do stuff. What else are we here for? If not to try stuff out. What else are we here for? What do you mean? Well, what are we here for? Just to enjoy life, isn't it? Well, well that's right. some scientists enjoy knocking a mammoth together. No, but don't don't worry about the mammoth. It died out. Maybe it died out for a reason. Why didn't Noah say that if it was if it was important? Because Noah, that's, that's not that's that. Uh, what do you mean? Noah's not true, is it? Well, I don't know. There might have been some truth in it. What what truth in it? That he put two of every animal that existed into an ark. How big was this then? 
why didn't they eat each other? Yeah, I know, I'm not saying- Imagine they... the noise, Carl. Yeah. No, trying to get a bit kit there. There's points to that where I go, that didn't happen, cause where could he have been where there was a hamster and an elephant and a, you know, <laughs> and a crocodile, where was he? Do you know what I mean? But none I, of it's saying... true. What bit do you believe? What do you mean? It got a bit wet. What, what, what are we talking about? The mammoth or the- no, no. What, what is up with you? No, it's just that we uh, had no, a lot- No, seriously, have you got brain damage? No, you, it's just that we had a lot of topics going on there. I just don't know which- were, you No, know, we were about. talking about Noah. And then you suddenly go, I know, I, I know, wait, 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 where did we go? What, the mammoth or Noah? What? <laughs> what is it? None of it's true. What, uh, think of it. Who to, uh, oh, God. Think of the first thing. Build an ark. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Can I just, just clarify, what's an ark? It's a bit of big boat thing. Right. Yeah. I just, I've never had any experience of carpentry. Just build a big boat thing. But I don't, I'm not really, I don't make- Just have a go, don't worry, you'll be alright, I'll make right. sure it's alright. But w once I've built that, I mean, yeah. how big should I build it? What am I Very content? big, needs every animal, two of Ooh, every animal, go there. on. Every animal. I mean, the boat building, fair enough. Like, make okay. it, I told you to make it big. Right. Don't worry about the fish, they can swim. Okay, but- so All the, the birds. Like, get the flightless ones though, they're drown. Get, get the flightless ones, they would- not the penguins, they're flightless but they can swim. But all other animals- I should be writing this down. <laughs> 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 oh. why, why, I mean, wouldn't you have took that opportunity to go right, you know, forget the, uh, you know, whatever. Man, you the jellyfish didn't need to get in it, did it? But, but there's other animals <laughs> where you can We go, don't need to be here. No. Because Carl is actually having a little argument with his own head. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you remember that comic strip, The Numbskulls? <laughs> yeah. Where there's loads of people in there doing different stuff. That He can hear them. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes his own mind puts him off. <laughs> yeah. Like just then, he has an argument with himself and it puts him off. <laughs> right, what's your question? I'm just saying, don't mess about with a mammoth. Whoa! Good. Okay. Well, what a platform, it's good. You know, we've got a radio show, we've got our own radio <laughs> show. People are spending money to advertise it, people are actually bothering to listen, and you- oh. the, what, the, wor the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth is don't mess around with a mammoth. Brilliant. Great. No, but- just- just going back to- You like, sound just like Bob Galdorf. Oh. Oh, I can't be bothered with this. He's trying to say- What? What can't you be bothered with? Just because I think I've got a good point. What? Don't mess around with a mama. <laughs> what? That's anything. not a point. Don't put your daughter on the stage, missing work. Well, what are you talking about? It's just that I think there's too many animals knocking about. I mean, I know you love your cat and what have you. Waste of time, though. What do they do? <laughs> well, they frighten you. Well, yours is mental, though, isn't it? He's sitting there, and the cat right behind him, and he nearly shot himself. Well, your cat is crazy. It does go through. It, it loves. Cause it's got claws, big old claws. Of course they have, it's a cat! Yeah, but no, most cats don't come leaping at your ghoulies every time you sit down <laughs> with a lovely warm hot cup of tea. Aren't they pointless though, Steve? <laughs> well, I've, I've always had a problem with pets generally, the other <laughs> But pets. cats the most. I, I was saying to Ricky about, I don't know why, out of all the animals that Dick Whittington could have took with him on his journey. Again! Yeah, forget the cat. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> What's What's it gonna gonna go? Okay, well, okay, okay, you've got to walk to London to, cause, the, cause the streets are paved with gold. You can take any animal, what do you take? It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cat because it would keep wandering off, you do double the distance. <laughs> Trying to get it back. Come here. They don't listen to you. It's point. I can't be dealing with them. I agree. You don't get enough affection back from a cat. Oh. A dog. It loves you. It can't get enough of you. But cats. They're very. They're very snooty. Well, they're cool, aren't they? Cats. They're cool, independent. I like dogs as well. I like all animals. What would you take with you? What if I was Dick Whittington? Yeah. And where is he walking from? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't it Bristol to London or something? I don't know. Uh, Again, it's a bit hazy. This isn't well documented. But did it come? I mean, why is he taking a pet and not a mate who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested. I try and learn, and you don't help. The Forgotten Arm, it's called She Really Wants You, XFM 104.9, Ricky Chavez, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Talking about, uh, technology, sometimes being a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, th when you came round the other night, before you came round, I'm sitting there, just at the computer, it's a hot day, wasn't it? I was, as you know, I was in my shorts, I was tucked in, I was, I didn't get them out till you came round, just my own business. Jane got some wax strips, and she went, oh, let me just do it back. I went, no, no, no. 
Right, I'm not, I haven't got a hairy back. I've got a couple of wispy hairs on my shoulders, probably about twenty either side. Nothing to worry about. It's not like I look one of those people that's like a, a gorilla on the beach. I right? assume your back looks a little bit like Carl's head. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I always do this. I know she put it on the back and she ripped it off. I went, forget it. She went, I've got to do the other side now. I said, forget it. I, and I, oh god, I let it do the other side. It's ridiculous. It's so painful, and I've hardly got any airs on the back, right? So, uh, it made me think of something that I'd heard about. There's a thing that you can do, and I don't know why, for people who are really hairy backs and people who are hairy all over, mm. okay, called back, crack, and sack. They do your back, and there's, you know, there's some people that do look like little monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. They do your back, they do your ass crack. <laughs> And they do your balls. Oh. In that order. Oh, <laughs> that <laughs> again! Always a question that doesn't matter. No, it, it does, because what I'm saying is, is it done from the top all the way down? It's not done in one! What do you think? This is huge 30 foot band aid type thing that you're wrapped in and then pulled. It's done a little bit at a time, isn't it? Right, well, again, it still matters. Which what? order? Because right. if it hurts your back, it's definitely <laughs> going to hurt the sack. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I think. What, what is it called? Back, crack, crack and sack. sack, or sack, crack and back? No, it's called back, crack. I d oh, I don't know. It's probably a marketing person said we've got it in order. You could probably choose which order you want them in. Carl. It's back, crack and sack. Uh, it should be sack, sack, crack, back. Definitely, it should be sold like that. Why? Because, like I say, if you're if you're lying there, look, you've had half of your back done. If yeah. you went, oh, forget it. Yeah. Right? There is no way you're gonna have the sack done. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? No. I'm sorry, I wouldn't have the crack and well, sack I, I done anyway. I don't know why people I'm are not going to have the back done. It doesn't need doing. Where are people going where they've got to worry about the, the condition of the sack? <laughs> At what event do you go to and you go, oh, I've got to look sharp. I've got, I've got to look the part today. I don't know. The sack Nudists? No, because they're about being natural and that, isn't it? Normally they are airy, like that woman on holiday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the women are, the men aren't. No, I don't know. They, yeah, they all, they all are sort of pretty airy. They believe in just leaving the body as it is. I think, they? I think little gay fellas like, love it, don't they? they don't, like why are you looking at me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know! Do you a little gay fella and you've had it done? Yeah, or text just, it. Just text in. What's the text thing? Uh, 83XFM, just text in, you know, tell us, uh, tell us what? I don't know. Do we need, is there any information that we're missing? Is it painful? I assume so. Of course it is. Uh, why, yeah, why, why, why did you, why did you get it done? That's, that's the question. Why did you get it done? Yeah, why yeah. is it important to have a hairless arse? <laughs> <laughs> Breaks on XFM. Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, Carl Pilkington. Carl, are we doing your uh, story with the song? Is that what you are doing? Yeah. Well, excited about it. Like last, what was it the other week? We did uh, Babushka. Did Babushka. Yeah. Um, pinball Wizard. You said if he's deaf, I'm blind. He doesn't even know he's playing pinball, which is. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> don't, don't, don't bother putting money in it. That's all I'm saying. Let him play pinball, but don't waste twenty p or whatever. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, <laughs> This week, right? Do you know how I was saying? It is a good point, actually. It is a good point. Again, though, it wasn't a documentary. It was what? just, it's, it's not, didn't really happen. Yeah, well, do you know how I was saying sometimes I listen to song. I, I like a song to be obvious what it's saying. Pinball Wizard was a good song. You need a song to be obvious. Uh, in the ghetto, you know, it's a kid growing up and all in that rough yeah. area, gets killed for nicking cars and messing with guns and that. Uh, mm. Living in the city, growing up in New York, rough area, how you cope with it and that, right? Mm. But they've got to be as simple as that. Otherwise, okay. I'm not that I've got a brand new combine harvester. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll about like the machine. It's brand new. Yeah. It's brand new. But it's even though it's new, he's willing to lend it out to other people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I mean is, if you start trying to be clever, yeah. the, the story's lost on you, isn't it? Not, 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 not necessarily me or Rick, but yeah, sure. Go on, on, on. We, we know what you mean. Go on. On primates, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this song here, right, it's not an XFM song and you'll probably hate the song, to be honest. Go on, what is it? What's the song? Yeah. It's Wonderful Tonight. Right? Eric Clapton. Okay, it's alright. Right. It's a, it's, 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 it's sort, a sort of bluesy here. sort of ballad from the late seventies. Yeah, it's alright. But I'm always arguing with Suzanne, because every time I hear it, I'm getting different pictures in my head. Yeah. Of like, what's going on, right? Okay. And I'm convinced it's about, like, this little cripple fella in a wheelchair, right? 
and is knocking about with his wife. Mm. And we don't say cripple anymore, do we, Steve? Do we say cripple? I, I don't think we said that since, um... Seven years? I think it's the seven years when we stopped. Mm. All right. Little, just a little fellow in a wheelchair then. Okay. Um, and the story is all sort of, uh, mm. you know, how he's, how he's being pushed about by his by Again, his no, that's not literally. By his wife, she's wheeling him about, what do you mean? He's wheeling him about, they go to a party, everyone sort of looks round and looks at him. What makes you think, what makes you think that he's in a wheelchair? What's the clues? What's the words? There's, there's loads of little things, it's like, uh, that, well, like I say, uh, something about his wife walking around with me and all that, well, of course she is, she's pushing him about. But, well, whoa, 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 walking around, if someone said, oh, she was walking around with me, I'd think they were both walking around. There's a few, th there's a few- But that's not a well, there must be another, there must be a reason why you suddenly thought that fella's is in a wheelchair. Right. Is my wife's walking around with me. your makeup, and I feel alright. No, and, 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 and she's always saying, do you feel alright, and that, she's always asking him how he is. <laughs> yeah, but, she's- uh, Just, just listen, let me play, right? <laughs> <laughs> and try and try and picture the scene, right? But now I'm only thinking well, of a little fella well, in a wheelchair. Well, have a listen to it, oh. and, and you know, just just everything that's being said. Okay. Understand why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. No, right? never. Yeah, there's no but, clue. But, but the thing is, that's that's what I'm picturing. But that doesn't mean it happened. You picture people that are half man, half moth. It doesn't mean it's possible. Do you know what I mean, Carl? What you what you think is usually not true. Suzanne is totally right. There is no reason. I have never ever thought that Eric Clapton was singing about a little fella in a wheelchair. And the one clue in that, there's two, isn't there? Are you all right? Well, let me say that, little cripple. Right, and uh, uh, I'll give her the car keys. Oh, why is oh, she driving? You ain't got any legs. Pushing them around and that. No, 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 well, it's just that you're always having a go at me saying, you know, you're never happy. Uh, True. You know, what, what cheers you up, what, what, what's the best thing that can happen for you and stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have never said to you what's the best thing that can happen for you. No, no, but- I'm like trying Steve's, to encourage you. Steve's, oh, yeah, and, and you have a bit. I've started reading more and, and, and doing more science stuff, even though some of it does me head in, like I say, knowledge is almost annoying. Right, <laughs> knowing about that mammoth is annoying. Think about being a quote. Yeah. Think that if I have seen further as close to the shoulder of giants, we will fight them on the beaches. It was MC squared. Knowledge is annoying. Yeah. That's an amazing one. Carl Pilkington, 2005. <laughs> no, but it can get you down, can't it? Go on knowing, on. knowing stuff that's going on. Yeah, knowing stuff. But sometimes anyway. I don't want to stuff in my head. When I read a horrible story or someone tells me, I, I wish I didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's all I'm saying. But, at the same time, there was something in the paper about, uh, things to do before you die. And it was just stuff that I sort of looked at, I thought, don't want to do that, cross that off, not bothering with that. Uh, at number one, you always know what's at number one, it's the same thing every time. Swim with dolphins. Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> Ripped up. Do you want to do that? What's going on down there that it's so good? What do I we not know. know about? I mean, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun. I'd, I'd love to uh, sort of encounter most animals, to be honest. I mean, there's be a few animals on the top of the list. I'd rather hang out with a bunch of chimps. I wonder oh, if I it's. I wonder if it's you're down there with dolphins and you're swimming with them, and they they sort of they they click away, they click click click, and they tell you a secret. They, they, you go into like a, they lead you into a cave, right? But down there, it's like. It's like being at like Rolling Stones house in the 1970s. It's there's like smoking. There, there's drink, there's women, yeah, they there's bars, tell bars. Them. There's like, um. They're eating tuna, they're loving tuna. They're loving it, but they can speak. They go, oh, this clicking stuff, it's nonsense. We're yeah. in a wild time then. Go berserk, go crazy. It's 24 hours of non stop debauchery. I think it's spiritual. But isn't never it? mention it to anyone else. It's incredible because you know they're so intelligent and, uh, you know. Do you know, do, do you know about. Dolphins, though, that how, how intelligent they are. Well, people keep saying that, but what, what have they done? You know what I mean? Why? What? What has someone done that they've gone? This they bolt. You know, they, uh, I've read a book by a dolphin or whatever. What? What <laughs> have they done? That makes them so bright. It's the same way they go. You know, oh, they, they look after you, they save you, and that. There's got to be one badden in that bunch. Of course they. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't suggesting they're all flipper. I'm not just they're constantly going round the the oceans trying to save people. Mm -hmm. I mean they're intelligent. 
you know. In what way? Could... What do you mean in what way? Well, what do what you, you mean, mean why do- because why they do pass people tests- Why they bright? Because of the things they can achieve and learn like and- what? And, well, they can- they can tell shapes, objects, colours. Mm. This- sorry, Carl, I mean they're no match for you. So no, they're not as clever as you. They're way down this that. But it's all relative, isn't it? From a, for a non-human, they're doing okay. They're up there with chimps, you know. So what do you want to do before you die? Uh, Anything? Any achievements you want to have? Well, if I'm ill, I'd prefer to go to the doctors than to go with the dolphins. Yeah. Why yeah. are you suddenly ill? It's not. They don't. When they say things to do before you die, they don't literally mean the sort of the day before. They mean you croak. <laughs> that you want to experience life. You can do it over the next twenty. Is that years. what you thought you meant? Like literally, is the that 24 what you hours meant? Before, like you a die. priest there going, ah, <gasps> ah, <gasps> give me the lift. <sighs> what is it, Granddad? Dolphins. You know, no fit state, Granddad. Get me in the water. <sighs> Get me down to Brighton. What do you think that list means? Well, yeah, that, you know, before you die. You're incredible, Carl. Amazing. You're inc- all this time. <laughs> things to do before you die. That's why he doesn't want to do any of them. Didn't you think it was a bit extraordinary that so you had to swim with dolphins and visit Disneyland well, and climb Mount Kilimanjaro all in the same afternoon? You, that's, that's why I said to you, I would be in no mood for a dip. <laughs> 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 that's incredible! Always a new twist on things. Always a new twist on things. But you say about travelling and that, you, uh, you like travelling and stuff, but what- why? Because I've seen and experienced extraordinary things, you know? I went to Kenya once, I met a man who was a, a, a vigilante, he was cleaning up his neighbourhood because the police were too corrupt to do it, carried a sword, and you know, he was extraordinary, he just- he, he'd been attacked but he didn't care, he fought them off, he was- he was trying in, the, in this little slum area to try and instill some law and order, he had to arrest his uh, brother-in-law once, it was a fascinating story and he was an extraordinary <laughs> man. I, I went to Manchester and I saw two lads with big heads and webbed feet looking at a house, there was a horse in the living room. I mean, that's right, a living. Leave, leave it then. Listen, I didn't realise it's like seven minutes to, right? Well, come on then. Well, let's do Rockbusters on. Yeah, it. do Rockbusters. And you got Monkey News. Well, we'll see if we've got time. No, we got to do Monkey News. Right, listen, listen though, Justin, if, if he's out in the office. Oh, look, just quick, do the right, Rockbusters right. answers then. Have you got a winner? No, I don't even know the answers, well, we'll, we'll do I? One. All right, then, uh, the first one. <laughs> oh, right. I just got the plastic cut. Great, right, the good. first one was when I'm ill, yeah. I throw up horse food. Right. Yeah. That's the clue. The initials were I H. I got right. this one. And that I was, must say, that, that was I sick haze. Because when you're ill, you're sick. What do horses eat? They eat hay. I sick haze. I yeah. sick haze is the answer. They got that. Second one, that garden tool. That, that garden tool you've got. It's not yours. What are you doing with it? Mm. Right. N D. That was different. That was a what? That, a, oh, what's a garden tool? A rake. Right. If it's not yours, what have you done? You've, you've nicked it. You've nicked Nick Nick Drake. You've nicked. You've nicked that rake, Nick Drake, Nick Rake, right? So that's ND. You got that. I don't know where that's, that's, no, that's fine. That's fine. The third one, that male sheep sounds well fed up. Go on. What's up with it? That was TR. Yeah. That was uh, that was that ram, ram. It's a ram. That's a male sheep. It's it's fed up. It's moaning. Ram moans. Ram owns the Ramones. So they got that as well. well. Let's give it to Jenny McKean from Isle of Wight because she's got all three of those answers. And uh, right, straight into Monkey News. It better oh, be no, let's play a record. Let's let's no, play a record we've got, got to do news. Monkey News. We it's only five minutes to go. We've let's got time for a record and then some Monkey yeah. News, surely. Oh, X bit of XTC. Oh. Mm. Mm. Making fans for Nigel XTC. Okay, uh, let's play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right, this uh, this happened in uh, Pittsburgh. Right, uh, there was a rock band, and uh, they sort of they've got this studio in in Pittsburgh and what have you, mm. and they're laying down tracks and stuff like that. And in the, in the studio that they use, right, there's this uh, this monkey works there. <laughs> I love the way he throws that in. Like, cool. like, cool. like, he throws that in, this monkey works there. No, it's just got a little gig there, he sort of, uh, it, it carries the equipment in, guitars. <laughs> it doesn't! He does. Uh, no, it doesn't. He just sort of cleans up after the bands. No, he doesn't. Emptying the ashtrays. Doesn't that happen. Stuff. It doesn't does. happen. That's, that's the gig it's got. Anyway, right? <laughs> Gets women out of the crowd that they want to, uh, <laughs> with one arm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, right, so the, the band's in the studio, yeah. right, 
and uh, one of the band members brings some A and R fella to the studio to have a listen to the latest track. Right? Yeah. So they hit play, and uh, you know, <laughs> they're all there going, "Yeah, brilliant! This is good." Oh, no. Anyway, so the fella says, "Yeah, I like the track. I uh, especially like the, the bass on it." <laughs> right, because right, this is bullshit. So this uh, is rubbish. So so and they hadn't laid down a bass. So right? so so this is. Have you heard it? <laughs> So the way, the, Carl, the please thing don't is, do right, this to so me. So the A and R fella goes, and yeah. it's like uh, it, the band members are stood about, and they're going, "That's good that you liked it." And I'm saying, "Yeah, but what's he on about with the bass?" So no, it, it that this is rubbish. This is absolute rubbish. Where did you get this from, please? Because we never Where get to the end. This is absolute so, nonsense. So they played it back. Yeah, right? and it's the chimp playing bass. So, Definitely not. So they were like. That's weird. We haven't got a bassist anyway. So they go, well, oh, whatever, right? So we haven't leave. got a bassist. <laughs> so they so, go, whatever. Let's go. Oh, home. forget it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>